Hey guys, Cool Brick here with a really old mock of mine. Um, this is my Lego house, and this was in my very first video on this YouTube channel. And um, yeah, this was this is a really important mock to me, and I'll get into why I'm making a video of it again in a minute. Um, first, I just want to talk about this mock because I didn't um, I didn't really mention this stuff when I took a video on this for the first time because um, it just never really crossed my mind. Um, this mock was pretty important because uh, it was the first mock that constituted me ordering things from Bricklink for the first time. So uh, I used Bricklink for the first time when making this house. Uh, I used it for getting these most of these roof pieces and um, yeah, so for the roof, I used Bricklink for the first time, uh, which was good. And also, this mock is what uh, inspired me to make a YouTube channel, which is pretty cool. Um, I've come a long way since then, um, mostly in terms of my filming quality and my ability to talk uh, to the camera in a better kind of form, less awkward, I guess. Uh, anyway... Uh, so, yeah, there are really two reasons that I want to make a video for this, and the first reason is that uh, the first video that I made for this is really bad quality and just all sorts of stuff, and it could have been way, way better. Um, and the second reason is that I'm a mock maker, and you can check out his channel from the link in the description. He's having a Lego contest where you can either make a Lego stop motion, a custom, or a mock. Um, not totally sure what a custom would represent, I'm pretty sure that just means a mock, but, um, you know, if I'm wrong, somebody can correct me. Um, so anyway, this is going to be my mock entry to his contest. So yeah, let's just get into this then. Uh, starting with the exterior, you can see the front. This is built on a 48 by 48 base plate, and I just used green plates, uh, on top of the 48 by 48 base plate and um, so yeah that's why it's not there's no such thing as a green 48 by 48 unfortunately the only 48 by 48s are light bluish gray so um, anyway now on to the more detailing stuff so I'll just start with the front you have a just a little garbage can over here and then you've got the front walkway over here and uh, some steps and I'll actually go into this area in a little bit more detail in a second. Um, I'm going to kind of swing around to this side of the house first. I think I'm going to try and get more uh, kind of close-ups. So I'll just move my camera closer. And let's see what we got over here. Uh, so uh, first thing you'll notice is you've got a couple kids here. And there's a sandbox and a pond. Um, in the sandbox, you've just got a kid over here. He's waving to his friend while uh, holding his bucket full of sand. And then his friend came here to play. And then you've just got a little cart thing. I think this actually came from a set. Uh, maybe slightly modified. Um, don't remember actually building that as my own thing. So uh, feel free to let me know what set this came from if you do know what set it came from. Um, and also, sorry if these pieces are a little bit dusty. Um, you know, this has kind of been sitting around in my city for a long time now. Anyway, so you've got a castle here. And uh, there used to be a flag on this, but I had to remove it for something else. But I think it looks fine like this as well. Um, and then coming to over here, you've got another trash bin and a recycle bin. And these can be put... Uh, more near the driveway or something off to that side over there and uh, for garbage people to collect it. And then you've just got a shrub here and then there are uh, there's a small window over here for the garage and I will go into more detail the garage and the front door area like I said before. And you've just got a little garden in here that's mostly fenced off. There's a little place in here to walk in. Um, and then over here just got some windows to the inside of the house 
And then you've just got some outdoor children's toys right here, a um, soccer ball, and a helmet, and another helmet here, you've got a skateboard, and just another bin for putting stuff in. And then coming down here, you've just got a little pond with a bird bath and a kind of badly made custom bird. <laughs> and you've also got a couple lily pads in here and a frog. Um, <laughs> I really like that frog piece. Those have been used for multiple things. Sometimes they make them in light bluish gray and they've actually used them for very cool stuff. Nice part uses in some sets. Um, and then uh, I'll actually turn my camera here because otherwise <laughs> this thing is going to fall off the edge of my <laughs> little filming area. So you've just got a little shed in here and uh, this has a window here, and this roof will come off. I'll get into the interior of stuff after I finish the exterior of everything. And the last thing on this side of the house is just the porch, and it's, it's not very big. Just got some stone steps and um, the little wooden area, and this is a sliding door that does work. So that's pretty good, pretty cool. Um, then back here, uh, these may look like shrubs from, um, I don't know, it's a creator set, and it's a small house with a dark blue roof. I don't remember the number or what it's called. Um, these look like the bushes from that, but um, I basically just took those bushes, rearranged the pieces, and then plopped them on this house. So that's where those came from. And you've got a big window here uh, that goes into the living room. Also, you'll notice... That this was back when I didn't really use BrickLink for most of this, just for the roof. So you can see, you know, that I really used all of my white pieces here. You don't have really long ones. You have a lot of little ones next to each other because I ran out of the big ones. You know, I used a lot of one by twos and stuff instead of where I could be using one by eights and things like that. And then on this side, it's pretty boring. Just got a single window on the bottom floor. And I didn't really show you guys the roof yet, so I'll show you the roof right now. The roof is really quite long, and um, you've got a set of these windows, two of them on this side, and then there's another two in the exact same places on the other side. Uh, these will open up if I can. There we go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is good. This one is in the bathroom right here. This is the bathroom, even though it's dark and you can't see that. And this is actually um, above the second floor, or the first floor. The second floor does not actually go past this area. You'll see when I get onto the interior of this uh, just what I'm talking about. Um, so now, the last thing, as I said, I would do... Oh, and there's also a satellite dish up here. Um, and then there's also just this last little roof that sticks out right here that goes over the garage. And this window looks into the bedroom. And that window looks into the bathroom as well. It's above the sink, I believe. So, um, like I said, I am going to go into more detail of the front. So you do have a garage door in here. And this will open. And um, I'll actually... Oops, sorry about that. I'll just take this off here so you guys can see the inside and um, it's not very spacey it's not long enough I think there are only a few cars that will actually fit in this um, it is pretty tall which is good but it's not that long and there is a door back there and um, I'll show you guys that when we get into the interior of the house just go ahead and shut this it's a very smooth action unfortunately it does leave these exposed Technic pins on the sides, which is a little bit of a downside, but it's not that bad. And then right here, you've just got a little light attached to the wall right here. And let me see if I can get this a little bit stable, more stable. There we go. And you do have a mailbox in here. This will open on the other end. You can just stick the mail through here. Of course, you've got an opening door. And I like the way that these steps turned out doing them like this. I think it's pretty cool. I can show you how I did this. I just put a jumper plate there and I used 
one of these curved pieces and just did a kind of checkerboard tiles um, while elevating them and then this will fit just perfectly right there fortunately you do get these little gaps but I really don't care because the rest of it just looks pretty good um, something original that I don't really see on any other people's mocks or sets or anything so I'm pretty proud of that little staircase not really a staircase but just those little steps going up to the door so anyway now we'll move on to the interior of things and just a warning this is a long video but hopefully it's not that much of me rambling it's actually going to be about this model so because there's just so many so many little details so I'm gonna turn this get as good of a kind of angle as this as I can probably have to remove the camera again so you guys can see what's in here um, actually before I open it up um, I don't think I showed you guys this from this angle there is a door on this side um, this will open can't seem to get my finger on it there we go so yep that opens up and this will come off very easily it's just held on by these six studs and it's pretty dark in there but, um, remove my camera here and there's not that much in here let me see how stable I can get this camera okay so um, on the right side right there that's a bucket of paint and then on the other side of this you just got a shovel and a broom and I think that's basically it in this shed there's not that much in here I think I could put more in here but it would get a little bit crowded so I decided not to um, put anything else in there um, for the time being just you know just so that it doesn't look really cluttered and crammed I think I'm putting this on correctly there we go so it's pretty easy to, re to remove the roof and put it back on um, same with the roof on the house the only thing is um, if you haven't if you're not the one who built this house uh, then you're gonna have trouble figuring out how exactly to put things on because it, it's very specific but if you know how to do it I think it's not super difficult it's just very large so anyway, now for the, um, whoops, I just dropped the, one of the garbage cans at the front. So I'll actually go ahead and remove the, um, remove, uh, the first, or the second floor and the roof. Um, or actually, um, I don't know. Should I do the first floor first, second floor first? I think I'll do the second floor first just because it makes things easier and the video quicker. So I'll just remove the roof, and you can see it all just comes off as one huge assembly. I'll actually kind of move this off the side just so you guys can see this um, as good as I can show you. So this all just comes off as one huge thing, and here's the inside of it. So this is how I built it, and um, it's kind of little bit complicated um, it is based off of um, something else these uh, window designs the way these windows were built with this um, with these kind of roofing technique and um, the way they're built on the inside as well these actually came from a set that idea and I just made four of them and then I kind of based the rest of the roof off of that as well as the dimensions of the house so anyway, that takes care of the roof. Put that down. Um, this does weigh a lot, I'll give you that. It weighs a ton. Probably, um, I think in the other video, I think I said 15 to 20 pounds or something like that. It's just, it's very heavy. Um, just because it's crammed with stuff. So anyway, the one downside of having a uh, angled roof like that is that you will kind of get more open walls and the walls do have to have these slopes and um, also this uses a lot of old and used nasty pieces you can see these pieces are yellowed and you can really they've got these little specks of dirt on them and stuff 
So anyway, yeah, there's some older pieces in here, and I'm sure you'll notice, but I'm not going to replace them because I really don't care. Um, you know, there's just so much, so many things in this mock. I just, I don't care about little yellow bricks like this up here. So anyway, I'll start where the stairs are. Um, uh, so this down here is uh, the living room. And um, let me see actually how close I can get this to camera because I think we can actually get a pretty good top-down view of the stuff in here. So um, if I turn the camera, or not turn the camera, turn the house, and also remove the chandelier, and we'll go over what that, how that works out later, just because it kind of gets in the way. So the stairs uh, go down here, they go next to the doorway of the kitchen, and unfortunately there is this little gap in there. Uh, a little bit tough to see, but um, things are a little bit... Oh, there we go. Now you guys can get some contrast in here so you can tell apart the pieces from the background. Um, so there's a little bit of gap in here. Um, but uh, I'm pretty proud of this considering that I mostly just winged this whole house. There was literally no planning involved. I just put things together and it somehow managed to work. So uh, <laughs> considering that's the way I built this, I'm very, very happy with the way that it turned out. So anyway, you have the stairs that come up. There is no banister on the stairs, so I guess you just have to be careful when walking up. And then you can look down into the living room from these railings, or uh, this, this little bit right here, if you're wondering what that is, is um, that just holds the chandelier in place. And I will go into more detail of the living room in uh, several minutes. Whoops. Put the corner of the base plate to my camera. So uh, this is kind of the upstairs hallway. You've just got a clock on a table. Very simple. And then even more simple and absolutely puny is this is the bedroom. The bed takes up the whole space. There's no lamp, no bedside table. There is literally nothing. And the roof uh, just barely clears these, I think. Um, just barely clears the sides of the bed um, over here. And then, like I said, there was a window right here. Um, so there is room for two minifigs, which is good. But um, yeah, there's literally no room for any, anything else. Um, let's see, I think I can remove this, oh, that's right, I forgot this whole section will come off. <laughs> so yeah, you can see how I built the bed. It's a pretty simple design. Um, I'll put this bit of the second floor back on. Second floor comes off in two sections, this and everything else. So, <laughs> you got a little bit of sneak peek on how that works. Then you've got the bathroom, and this is what would be the doorway to the bathroom. Um, I kind of figured that either not me either only like two people are gonna live here or one person, so uh, I didn't bother with doors on the second floor for two reasons. One, or actually just one reason. Um, I could have put a door here if I wanted to, but for the bedroom I can't have put a door here because the sloping roof would go like that and a one, a one by four by six doorway would not fit in there. Um, so anyway, yeah. No doors on the second floor. In fact, I don't think there are any interior doors other than the one leading from the garage into the house. I think that's the only one. Um, so anyway, on to the bathroom. You've got a nice mirror here with some drawers down here. Little shelf, you know, maybe you can apply some makeup or shave or whatever it is you people do in the bathroom when looking at yourself in the mirror. You've just got a couple lights so you can see what you're doing. Then off here in the corner, you've just got the washing machine. And um, I really like that little detail in there because I had no idea what to do with this space. And um, I guess it worked out good for uh, putting just the washing machine in there. It's kind of like a little laundry area. I didn't put a dryer in there. Um, didn't really see the need. 
to do that also would make it tougher to get to the washing machine because that would mean there's only a one stud worth of space for the minifig to walk through. So I just left it like that and I think that's great by itself. And then over here, you've just got a very simple toilet and uh, a sink. Pretty simple sink. It's kind of big and wide, but um, now I actually have pieces to close that up instead of using bricks. But at the time, I didn't. Uh, you, you kind of have to consider that when I built this, I didn't really have any idea what I was doing. Um, and I just didn't make do with what I had. That's why. You can see this is mostly checkered floor, but then you've just got this random one by six black tile instead of you know the normal checkered pattern. So you know you can really tell that um, I was just doing the best with what I had when I was building this because I didn't get things specifically for this. Um, so yeah, that basically takes care of the second floor. Very last detail which I missed. Uh, just a very tiny little thing is just this little picture on the wall. I don't know why I put that there. Um, I think I just didn't have a normal 1x2 brick, so I just put um, a couple modified bricks there. And you know, you can't just have some random open studs. So I think I just put picture on there. Um, pretty interesting way of taking up space, but I guess it worked for me. So now I will um, actually move this back here and I will remove the second floor. So like I said, it comes off in two parts. This part is one of them. Um, I think that just made things easier. Um, I don't know, actually. I think it just, I didn't want, uh, I think it would be a bit flimsy if I had that bit attached to the rest of the second floor section. Um, so anyway, the rest of the second floor I can take off. And it did take off a couple of the plates that were holding it on. So you can see this section back here will um, will come off as well. So it all comes as one thing. And actually I'll just kind of set this on here. I won't attach it again. But um, just so I can show you how the chandelier works because I forgot about that. So here's the chandelier, and this is built upside down. So it's built like this, with the top being down there, that going that way. And there's just a little hitch piece that goes in there. And you're probably wondering why it's so fat, and why there's this big fat thing on here, and that's because it actually lights up. I did put a light brick in there, and, oh, there we go. Um, I think it's running out of battery. Um, I'm actually going to take that off because it's getting a bit stuck. But um, yeah, it's, it's getting a little bit weak now, that light brick. Um, but I'm glad. I like the function of having a light in here. I always like that kind of stuff where you have working things incorporated in. And the way I did this was you can just see the light brick in there and those axles go through those Technic plates just go through and press the button to make it light up so works pretty good uh, it's a little bit blocky looking but I don't mind too much because I was really going for functionality with this um, so anyway on to the, um, the bottom floor remove the second floor and I think I'll also put the chandelier with it as well. Okay, so here is the first floor. I'll start over in the main hallway, which is pretty big actually. Um, so right in there is the, uh, the main hallway. I'm just going to try and get as good of an angle on here as I can. So you guys can really see what I'm talking about. So here's the other side of the front door. Um, I don't know why I put these here. I think it's just because I had a two, a two long, well, it's four wide and then the depth is two for this door frame. So I just had extra four studs here. Um, I don't know, so I just 
kind of put some stuff on there. And I'm trying to get the contrast, right? So you can see both white pieces and black pieces. It's kind of tough. Um, and this is the mailbox, and you can just grab the mail from in there. That's great. You don't even have to go outside to get the mail, which is wonderful. And um, the only thing I noticed is once I actually I push this piece down um, all the way down there, and it's very tough to get it back up because it goes right up against uh, the studs of that plate down there, and it's very tough to get it back. So that was the only problem I ever noticed with that section right there. Then you've just got, uh, this is the door that leads into the garage, just right there. Um, I like the way that looks. Um, and the, the door I used, it's pretty good. And then in the kitchen, the kitchen is a little bit interesting, but um, it's okay. Uh, so uh, you've got the sink in here. It's kind of tough to see these pieces because they're black against black. Um, you will notice that this house is mostly black and white, actually, which is um, kind of interesting because those are the pieces that um, I really had an abundance in. And I'd also just gotten a ton of uh, four by six black plates, which is what the floor is mainly made up of over here. And um, I don't know if you guys uh, noticed this. I'll just temporarily... Sorry, I always put my finger in front of the camera. Uh, this is the bottom, and so the, this black line here is actually the floor of the house. So you'll notice that the house is actually raised up a little bit, which is why I could do things like the steps and the doorway um, being raised. So basically, it being raised was um, good. I didn't intend for that to be the reason for it being raised. It just kind of happened. Um, but uh, it ended up being really good that it was raised up. So I'm glad that that worked out that way. Um, back to the kitchen. Uh, you've just got a telephone, and like I said, the sink. And I'm turning this around so that we can see this. Um, you've got a coffee maker, and there's a stove on here with a pot. And this is the oven, and there's a chicken drumstick in there cooking. And then just some containers of food over there, pizza. And there is a couple containers down there under that counter, but it's really tough to see them. And in fact, the one on the right side is actually blocked by the oven, so I don't even know why I put it in there. Then you've just got another set of cupboards up here. These don't have anything in them, to my knowledge. Um, actually, this one has a frying pan in there. Let's see if I can, <laughs> yeah, forget it. I'm not gonna get any light in there, but there is a, whoops, <laughs> there's the frying pan. So I did have a frying pan in this one, which is pretty good. And then you've got a refrigerator. I don't remember if there's anything in this either. Uh, nothing in here, and then I think this one on the bottom would be the freezer. Nothing in there either. So anyway, that's the kitchen. So, uh, and here are the stairs that I was talking about next to the entranceway of the kitchen. And the very last part is the living room. So this is kind of a living room and office sort of thing. Uh, the office bit is puny. You've just got a 4x4 four four space of desk. And I managed to cram a ton of detail into this desk. Uh, so you've got a turning chair swiveling chair and then um uh and then you've got a stud here computer and keyboard um fortunately the, they're different colors i can probably find a replacement of either one to make them match but i really don't care right now and you've got a little lamp in there a bit tough to see and you do have mail and this mail is actually attached so it's not going to move even though it's on an angle i just did that by putting a single stud there and just putting those there. So it looks like he's got some mail piled up, or she. Don't really have anybody living here, um, interestingly. Probably would be a parent and a kid since there are kids playing out in the, the front yard, or side yard rather. So I'm assuming either a mom or dad, probably a single parent. 
Um, it's a little bit awkward that there's only one bed, but, um, you know, I guess I just put those kids there in the sandbox for the looks, and I didn't have room for two beds, too. So, on this side of the living room, uh, and keep in mind, we're almost done with this. This is a really long video. I'm sorry. It's 30 minutes. It's going to be longer than 30 minutes. A little bit longer. Um, so, over here, um, oh, this is kind of hard to get a right, the right angle on this. Um, so you've got a coffee table down here and a large HD TV, very large, I might add. Um, if that was real size, uh, that's actually a huge TV because if you think about that relative, if I grab one of the kids over here, this TV is about a little bit less than twice well, actually, yeah, it's about twice the length of this kid. So imagine somebody who's like four and a half feet tall, maybe maybe less, maybe like four feet tall, small child, and you have a TV that's nine feet wide. That's a freaking huge TV. So, <laughs> yeah, let's get a little bit off. It's kind of funny thinking about that, a nine foot TV. I actually never realized quite how big that is. <laughs> how big the TV is relatively until just now. And then the last thing is just this couch in here. I'm gonna do my best to show it to you guys. And uh, it's five, no, six, six wide couch. And it's pretty simple. So yeah, I think that covers everything amazingly and there was just a ton of stuff to say and talk about, about the smock. And um, this was really a, um, a keystone mock in my collection. And just as something for experience as a Lego builder, um, you know, this really added to the way I think about Lego and um, the techniques I used, and especially when building buildings, this was the first building that I made that was actually good in any sense. Every other building I had made before that was a mix of probably like 20 different colors and um, not that many features, and I didn't have any idea what I was doing. And ironically, I had no idea what I was doing when I was building this too, but it ended up being good somehow so um i know some of you i don't know how many of my subscribers or people who are watching this have already watched the other video on this same house um <laughs> and it's funny because that one's actually about half the length of this video but um yeah please let me know what you think about this and um yeah Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.